Here are our continuation of notes on gas stoichiometry using Avogadro's law. So let's remember that Avogadro's law states that equal volumes of different gases at the same temperature and pressure contain the same number of molecules. So according to Avogadro's law, one mole of any gas will occupy the same volume as one mole of any other gas at the same temperature and pressure. And you're going to do a formal lab on this that you're going to prove that this is indeed the case. So let's remember that STP, which is standard temperature and pressure, is equal to 0 degrees Celsius, 273 Kelvin, 1 atmosphere, or 760 millimeters of mercury. So the volume occupied by one mole of a gas at STP is known as the standard molar volume of a gas, and this has been found to be 22.4 liters and 22,400 milliliters. So let's remind ourselves what the ideal gas law, and actually also the combined gas law are. So the ideal gas law, just remember, is PV equals NRT, and then the combined gas law is P1V1T2 equals P2V2T1. We're actually going to use both of these today. We can combine gas stoichiometry with either one of these. It just depends on how you want to solve the problem. And we'll talk about that on the bottom part of the notes here. So let's just remind ourselves that one mole contains 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. So we're going to use the ideal gas equation to help us determine how many moles of a gas we have. So let's balance this equation. So since there's two diatomics over here, we know that we need a two right here to balance this. And we know that those are equal to the number of moles we have in the problem. And if I know that one mole of, a, of anything is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd molecules, I can actually fill in the number of molecules that I have for each of these. This value comes from, because I have two moles of hydrochloric acid, I need to multiply 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd by 2 to get this value. We're going to find the grams from the periodic table, and we see that this is 73 grams, which is hydrochloric acid, that's 71 plus 2, and that helps us confirm the conservation of mass. Our volume, we're going to treat like a mole, so we're going to call it a volume unit, and because I have one mole, I know I have one volume unit, and so here, because I have two moles, I have two volume units. And when I know that one volume at STP equals 22.4 liters, I know that at two volumes, it's going to be 22.4 multiplied by 2. So we can figure out a lot of information just from a balanced equation if we understand what we have available. So now let's do some stoichiometry with examples at STP and then examples not at STP. So our first example at S is at STP, so it asks how many liters of hydrogen are set free when 8.08 .08 grams of magnesium react with hydrochloric acid. So we know that this is a single displacement reaction, and we're going to write out our balanced equation to start here. So then I know I can just do stoichiometry because I'm at STP. I don't need to do anything else other than stoichiometry because I know at STP one mole of a gas is 22.4 liters, and I can use that in my T-chart. So I'm going to start with 8.08 .08 grams of magnesium in the top part of my T-chart. And I know that 8.08 .08 grams of magnesium is equal to 24 grams to 1 mole. So now I know that I'm not done, which is why my T-chart was going really fast on the video here, because I got a little bit ahead of myself. I know that moles of magnesium is not my answer here. So what I want to do is continue my T-chart. And I know that moles of magnesium is going, going to go on the bottom. So then I ask myself, can I go from moles of magnesium to liters of hydrogen? Much like you can't go from moles of magnesium to grams of hydrogen, if you go moles to liters, you need to make sure that the magnesiums were to match. But since we're trying to go to hydrogen here, we can't go liters of hydrogen. But I can go to moles of hydrogen. And I know that it's one-to-one -one because of my chemical formula up at the top right there. So now I am in moles of hydrogen, and I want to put moles of hydrogen on the bottom. And then I ask myself, now can I go from moles of hydrogen to liters of hydrogen? And you can, because one mole of a gas at STP equals 22.4 liters. And it's one mole of any gas. It doesn't matter the gas. So now I can do my calculations, and I know that one mole of a gas, because one mole of a gas at STP is 22.4 liters, I know that 8.08 .08 grams of magnesium is 7.54 liters of hydrogen and at STP. So that's really important that we remember that. So now, an example not at STP. So how many liters of hydrogen are set free when 8.08 .08 grams of magnesium react with hydrochloric acid when the temperature is 35 degrees Celsius 
and you're at 0.8 atmospheres. So we have two options, so I'm going to show you both. On this side is going to be A, and on this side is going to be B. And I'm going to try to color code them for you. So we're going to use stoichiometry first to moles, and then the ideal gas law for the final volume. So that's going to be my first example here. Okay. Um, again, just a reminder, if you're at STP, you only need to do stoichiometry. So here, because we're not at STP, we're going to have to do two things. We're going to have to do stoichiometry and the ideal gas law, or we're going to have to do stoichiometry and the combined gas law. So the first thing, because I'm not at STP, okay, we're going to do stoichiometry first to moles, which is that showing you right here, so I erased that last part of the T-chart. There's no need to redo that work because it's the same number of grams and it's the same equation. So I've got 8.08 .08 grams of magnesium. So in an effort for you not to erase it, just go ahead and draw a dot right here and go ahead and draw an arrow so you know that that's going to equal your moles. So you've done all the work right there. You just need to draw an arrow showing, okay, now I've calculated for moles. So you're first going to do stoichiometry to moles and then do the ideal gas law to find the final volume. So we know we have our pivnert, and I'm going to set up my variables. Once I calculate for the number of moles, which is 0.34 moles of hydrogen, again, I can plug in my variables here and be able to solve for the volume. So I know that my 0.8 is coming from right there. My volume is what I'm trying to find. 0.34 came from my stoichiometry. 0.0821 is my R constant. And 308 is 35 degrees Celsius added to 273. So that's where I got all of those numbers. So N to figure out our number of moles and then the PV equals NRT is one option when you're not at STP. The other option is to use stoichiometry first to volume and then use the combined gas law. So this one's actually really important because this is the math that you're going to do for the lab. So you do need to know how to do both ways. I agree that the ideal gas law way is probably a little bit easier. So I really don't care how you do your practice problems, but I do need you to understand that your math in the lab is going to be using stoichiometry first to volume and then using the combined gas law. So first we're going to do our stoichiometry to volume. So knowing one mole of hydrogen and 22.4 liters, so we're back to our 7.54 liters. And then we're going to use our combined gas law, which reminder is P1V1T2 equals P2V2T1. So I'm going to set up my variables. And I'm just going to decide that my P1 set is going to be at STP. So I'm going to say that P1 is going to be 1 atmosphere. V1 is going to be 7.54 because I've calculated for it like it's at STP. And T1 is going to be 273. So essentially, it doesn't matter which side you do this on. You just need to make sure that you keep your STP values all the same so that here you have the correct variable in the correct spot. So now I know that P2 is 0.8 atmospheres, V2 is what I'm trying to find, and T2 is 308 Kelvin. So then I set it up in my equation, and I put my variables underneath, and I solve for the volume, and I get practically the same thing. I got 10.6 here, 10.75 here, rounding errors, all of that stuff accounts for that difference. So it's relatively equal and equal enough for us to be able to use either version for finding leaders not at STP. So thank you very much for watching this and taking those notes and coming ready, and we will practice the backside of this worksheet in class. So don't do it before you come to class. We'll practice it in class and help you through the harder problems. Thank you so much.